Hi, I'm Kent. Let's see if we can dial in my plaster skills and get rid of a few more bubbles. In my last video, I tried a few different things to go ahead and get some more bubbles out of my plaster casts for my slip casting. I tried using some Windex on the surface of my silicone mold, and that seemed to get rid of some of the bubbles on the surface. I used a different drill attachment, which introduced even fewer bubbles into my plaster while I was mixing it. And the last thing is I used a shaker table to try and get all the bubbles to raise to the surface. Overall, these seemed to work, but I still had a few bubbles left in my plaster mold. For some context, here is my original plaster mold. This is what I've been doing basically up until this point. And I'm showing the outside of the mold, which actually shows all of these bubbles. So there's all of these tiny little pinhole bubbles throughout the outside of the mold. And since this isn't the casting surface, it doesn't matter too much. Unfortunately, I also have a bunch of bubbles on the inside. And these are transferring into my pots and are kind of annoying. In the last video, I tried using Windex, my different mixer, and my shaker table to try and get rid of these bubbles. And this was my plaster casting out of that. It mostly worked. The outside looks much, much better. There's a few artifacts, but these are from my silicone and in turn from my original 3D print. Unfortunately, I had some bubbles on the inside here. Upon thinking about this, I think I did a better job of getting fewer bubbles into the plaster to start with, but the shaker table was allowing the bubbles to rise. Unfortunately, the nature of my mold was catching those bubbles. So this here is the inside part of my mold, which goes right here, and the shaker table was shaking all the bubbles and they were going up, but because of the slip here, there's no place for them to go, which means they all got trapped right here in this edge. This one is just the shelf for, to catch excess slip while I'm casting, so I have a reservoir. It doesn't matter too much, it's just kind of annoying. The real problem is the ones in the bottom. There are definitely bubbles still in the bottom, and those would transfer into my pot, much like my original one. So gravity is doing the wrong thing. The bubbles are going up. What I need to do is have the bubbles go down so they're in the outside surface so they don't matter. I want to cast it like this. So here is my outside sleeve for the silicone, and here's the inside, these two to go together. I pour the plaster in here, and the bubbles are rising to the top, and I was catching them. What I want to do is turn this upside down so the bubbles come around. So I made some slight modifications to my mold. The inside piece is exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and secure it down, and then I'm going to invert this piece here, and you'll notice a big gaping hole now, which I cut in. I will center this over the top and secure this down, and then the plaster will go in here. So I'll pour the plaster in, and as the bubbles rise, they now have a place to go and escape. Hopefully they'll all come out, but if the few that don't come out get stuck, they will be in the bottom of my mold, which doesn't matter as much. That is the new theory. Let's try it out and see if it works. First, I'm gonna do my mold prep. I've drawn a bunch of circles here, so I can try and get this thing down. I want it somewhat centered. When I created this mold, I meant for it to be cast the other way around, so I have to do a little bit of improvising here to make it work this way. I want to go ahead and tape it down so it doesn't float, and I can get a watertight surface. So for that, I've been using this foil tape. This doesn't create the smoothest of edges, but hopefully is good enough. And it may not stick to the silicone, so that may be a different problem. We will see. All right, I've gone around and taped that all down. Next is this piece, which is the outside. I could just build collar boards around this and make a square mold and pour around it, but since I have this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Basically just means I need less plaster. All right, sealed the gap between the silicone and the 3D printed shell. Now this goes on top, it's centered up, and then I will tape this down to my board as well. I think off camera, I'm gonna go ahead around one more time and make sure it's all sealed. This definitely takes a lot more prep work doing this way with this mold. I think the right thing to do would be to redesign the mold so it can be poured upside down. However, I'm only going to bother with that if this actually works. One thing I forgot to do already is apply my Windex. I think I'm just going to squirt some down in there and hope it covers reasonably well. I can pick it up and swirl it some. The Windex is a surficant, which means it reduces the surface tension of water, which means any bubbles, hopefully, that are on the surface will come away. Next up, I think, is mixing the plaster. I have my plaster all measured out here, both the plaster and the water, and next up will be to mix it. Last time I did this on the shaker table, I think I'll go ahead and do that again. I'm not sure if it's required, but it can't hurt. Takes a second for it to get going. Do this moderately slow. Got a board here, I'm just gonna mix everything on. First up is slaking. I'm gonna pour the dry onto the wet. So there's the wet, and here's the dry. Okay, I can go a little bit faster. There's actually an interesting question if I want to have it shake while it's slaking or not. 
Slaking basically just hydrates all of the particles, whereas mixing them actually causes the chemical reaction to happen or accelerates it. I'm not exactly sure. Magic plaster chemistry. Go ahead and let it shake this time. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to let this sit for three and a half minutes. All right, that's done slaking. Now I have my paddle attachment. And this will spin around. Instead of sucking air down, it will push the plaster out. At least that's the theory. All right, that's four minutes. I went ahead and bumped up the table setting. I'm gonna do it a little bit more actually. All right, let's let that shake for 30 seconds, which is something I didn't do before. I've got a few bubbles on the surface. Hopefully they don't stick around. And here's my mold. Let's go ahead and pour the plaster in. Try and do a thin stream. Help pop bubbles along the way. There definitely are still tiny bubbles trapped in here. All right, just to the top there. Let's turn the speed back up. Definitely losing plaster somewhere. So I've clearly got a leak back here somewhere. I'm gonna let this go for a while and keep an eye on it just in case there's more plaster leakage. Hopefully there's not. We'll come back to it when it's all set. The plaster is all set. Here's the bit that was left and it's all hard. We had some leakage, but not too much. So the level went down, but not a lot. So let me resituate things. All right, let's see if we can demold this guy. All right, there we go. A little bit leaked under, but not too much. So there's the inner mold. That'll come out. And here's the truth. That looks way better. So first look is a good one. So like on my last mold, I had bubbles all around this edge. And I don't have those anymore. So I had all these big bubbles here. Those are all gone. And in the bottom, I see a few dark spots. I don't see any obvious bubbles poking through. Time will tell. Versus here, I clearly had some subsurface bubbles. All right, let's see if we can get this out the rest of the way. You need to be careful this foil tape. It already bit me once. This edge with the tape is a little bit ugly, but that's just from having to cast it upside down. Let's see if I can pop it out. outside shell and then this will just fold down yeah no problem the silicone really is magical I tried to avoid it for a long time since it's so expensive and I don't make that many molds but it definitely makes the process a whole lot easier I've got a little bit of a foot here that I need to deal with so I still had some bubbles in the plaster and they all raised to the surface however since this is the outside of the mold it doesn't matter but likewise the surface part of this may be because I forgot to put the Windex on before I assemble the mold but either way since the bubbles are coming this way I don't have to worry about them. This is the part that gets subcast against. Let me take a few minutes and clean this mess up and I'll show you the mold a little bit more. And here's where I've gotten with my fight against bubbles. So I started with this with a bunch of bubbles on the outside, but unfortunately I had bubbles on the inside as well. By changing my technique, I was able to get rid of all the bubbles on the outside. Unfortunately, this is the side that doesn't matter. And I wound up with bubbles on all the top surfaces. So they all floated to the top, but they still got captured into my plaster. So slip casting this is no good. And then finally, by casting things upside down, all the bubbles floated, and in particular, they floated this way. So this outside surface has some problems, but the inside surface is actually much, much better. This here is a bit rough from my improvised redoing of my mold so I could use it upside down. All this part here, which is the shape of the pot, is more or less perfect. There might be some tiny pinhole bubbles there, and I think by being more careful with my Windex, I might be able to get rid of those. But overall, this seems like it's a large improvement. Time will tell. We'll see how this mold behaves after I slip cast it for a while. But so far, this is looking promising. Would I recommend taking a mold that is designed to be cast right set up and turn it upside down to cast plaster in it? Probably not. 
This one, it worked okay, but definitely has some sacrifices. I will keep this in mind as I design new plaster molds. I wanna make sure that any of the surfaces that are facing the pot are on the bottom side and any of the exposed surfaces therefore are on the top side. So if I do wind up with bubbles still in the plaster, they'll be on the non-critical surfaces. Watching some other casting channels, for instance, of resin, this is a lesson that's been hard fought and won there, and I think it applies here too. The other lesson is potentially to get the bubbles out of the plaster itself. There's been some interesting discussions in the comments about using a vacuum chamber. I think that'd be great that actually pulls all the bubbles out of the plaster, I think might be the really the way to go. For instance, with resin cast in, you'll actually degas the resin itself, and then when it sets, put it into a pressure pot. So the idea is to pull out all the bubbles that are in the plaster, or in the resin in that case, go ahead and pour the mold, and then put it into the pressure pot so that any bubbles that are remaining get crushed and are made really, really tiny. To really get bubble-free plaster molds, that may be an interesting path to explore. However, in the meantime, I'm going to try and let gravity do the work for me. As always, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.